just wondering, you know, after this movie, if I don't go to prison, and you know, you're not busy, maybe we could go to a beach somewhere. Well, I saw the movie again last night. It's still awesome. It Great. Has, it hasn't lost a beat. So I am curious, and maybe this was done on purpose, and I'm going to make myself embarrassed right now, but here we go. So I thought when I watched it again last night, I noticed Ryan's stunt double face in a few frames and I thought I noticed, and again, I could be very wrong, and I thought I noticed some wires that you could actually see in, like, two frames. I, a, it could be completely wrong, or B, this was done on purpose. Right. You may see the stunt double's faces at times that are, like, a few frames. That's fine. Yeah. That was never um, anything we were shying away from in the sense it was trying to be more old school, you know, like, when you watch some of those old great movies, like, uh, even in, like, Indiana Jones or even, you know, Die Hard. Like, there's times where stunt people, yes, you know, stunt people can see stunt people. And I think I wanted for the stunt people to see the stunt people at times. So that was just where that's happening. But not also enough to where we're breaking the illusion of the, the journey we're on. Wires could have just been confused because there's this scene at the Opera House where we're cutting back and forth from behind the scenes, Jody's camera footage and then movie footage and then... So when it's movie footage, I was erasing the wires. When it was her looking through the lens, sure. I saw the wires, and I don't know. But otherwise, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's just because I have a very specific eye, and yeah. I can see things in two, three frames that maybe other people won't see. Yeah. I, anyway, that's, just, that's oh. just me. What do we need to do? You address it in the movie, which I fucking love, but what do we need to do to get stunts recognized in awards season? It's really in process now, and I think what's great is that, I mean, I think, I, I'm really encouraged. You know, the journey that Jack Gill and Greg Smurz and Melissa Stubbs have been on inside the Academy for a long time, and bringing a lot of us in through the members at large, which because the stunts never had a branch inside the Academy. So we came in as members at large, and now there's nearly 100 stunt performers inside who got grafted into the new branch production and technology. Now, that being said, inside production and technology, we're working through the academy, um, kind of following the same model as casting has done. And they've sort of laid a roadmap that's really clear. And I think that we're on track, and I hope uh, soon it's going to happen. And I think there's real support from everybody inside the academy. It's just really getting through the bureaucratic steps now. You know, you can see positivity from the video that uh, 87 North produced for the awards and the support of, obviously, Ryan and Emily. There's tremendous support with the actors, with directors, with all the departments. I think it's just process. Sure. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I, I need it to happen because everyone is deserving. Yes. So one of my favorite scenes in this movie involves no action. It is just um, Ryan in a car to a song by a very popular artist. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, and it's him reacting to the song. He's a very emotional, and it's the banter between your two leads. Yes. Talk about filming that scene, because it's fantastic, but also landing that artist. You know, we didn't have that artist on the day we shot it, but we played an equally romantic song that I'm not going to remember at the time, that we were playing through the speakers from the time he's walking to the truck and getting in, and, and it was to, just to build up the emotion for Ryan. And it was a conversation I had with Ryan, like he really wanted to make this a genuine, earnest scene, but also we could undercut it with some comedy. So we knew we had to land that track. We weren't sure what it was going to be yet. And, um, you know, after we'd shot the scene, which, by the way, is so incredible watching them work, the two best actors working today. I'm, like, watching this unfold in front of us. And Kelly and I are, like, we have so many great choices. Like, they were real genuine. You believe that they're stumbling back together, and it's awkward, just like anyone else having a real relationship. But then they also had fun ad-libs and things that you can see you'll get to see in extended versions and things, you know, that just, you knew you could undercut the scene in a million different ways. But it wasn't until once we got um, into editorial, we were drifting, we were drifting through a bunch of different tracks and Kelly was playing a lot of this artist, <laughs> a lot of it. And she was not, she was not subtle in hinting to me what the song should be and like constantly playing this song. Um, so I just, I said, okay, fine, I'll throw it up against the, the montage and we'll see and it was like it was made for it i was i couldn't it was such an insightful you know grab and an insightful sort of thing from her so we got it and then we reached out and we um she graciously gave us the rights for a price and uh <laughs> 
But it's great. It's it's the perfect uh, moment. And it was even it was really slightly before even it all all the stuff, the thing going on with the NFL and all that. It was even before that. We had that in the movie. It was in there for a long time. Before uh, this artist became part of the cultural zeitgeist in a massive way. Correct. Correct. So it was another sort of beautiful thing. Like, you know, we have these two actors that are having this incredible moment with Bar- Barbie and Oppenheimer. And then we just happen to have this track in the, in the, in the DNA of the movie that is this other incredible artist who's, <laughs> they're on the top of their game. I'm like, how did this happen? It's, um... You know, yeah, whatever Universal paid for that song was worth 10 times over. <clears throat> yeah, It's one of those. So yeah. uh, I hate doing spoilers, but I want to talk about the very opening shot of the film, which I love. And it's a very long one you involve an elevator, and it involves Ryan getting hooked up to something. Yes. So I think people are going to want to know, when Ryan's getting hooked up, how real is that versus how much is CGI in a blue screen? Like, what's going on there? Okay, so it was funny. This was a question that Spielberg asked me, too. And when, so I had the, uh, Stephen got to see the movie and he graciously invited Kelly and I to come talk about it. And we were talking about this and we were discussing, were there any stitches in that shot? And I said, there weren't any stitches. We went all the way up the elevator until the moment we had to hook him into the rig. And there's a really beautiful, um, stitch and I want to, I'm not going to spoil where it is, but so we needed to be safe and hook him up to the rig, but all of that is real. And then we just stayed there. Lowered him up, leaned him off the edge, craned out, and he's hanging 12 stories in the air. That's Ryan Gosling hanging 12 stories in the air, no green screen. And then we dropped him. We, you know, free fall. Um, yeah, he likes to say that he was putting the sunglasses on to hide his panic. <laughs> <laughs> like it was an acting choice. Um, but no, you know, we, we built him up from, you know, shorter distances and like, you know, he's not, he, he has a fear of heights. He had mentioned, you know, he's not, he wasn't like, that was the one stunt, like he was trying to negotiate out of at times. And, um, but he knew ultimately it was important for him to feel what a stunt person must feel at that moment. And, um, I credit him for that. Cause so he went through the progression we asked him to do. And like, we took him out to a parking lot and we brought him up at different heights and we showed him how the rig works and like, um, we tested it a couple times so he could get used to it. So on the day, he knew what it would feel like. I just have to say that is incredible acting because he must be scared out of his fucking mind. But he has to deliver this incredible performance as Colt. I know. Like where there's super confident. Yeah, super confident. And he's setting up the love story. And then they have their chemistry. And they're super flirty. And they're charming. And then he's, you know, walking basically <laughs> to his <laughs> his biggest fear but you just like laughing with her and like telling jokes and like yeah he's a again he's an incredible actor and he was able to compartmentalize all of that and and then obviously bring this character to life um yeah it's a pleasure working with ryan like it was one of the best experiences i I gotta go but it's clear for people that want to know so it is definitely ryan getting hooked up yeah it's definitely ryan taking that that. 100 percent, right and it's um no no green screen involved Thank you so much, sir. Million other questions for another time. Okay.